One of the easiest ways to scale your agency is by actually getting good results for your clients. I mean, just think about it. If you sign just one client a month with an average retainer of a thousand dollars, pound euros a month, and that client never leaves you, then at the end of the year, so at the end of 12 months, you've gotten 12 clients all paying you a thousand a month, which means that you're making it 12,000 a month, which means that you have a six figure business. I mean, that is basically how simple it is, okay? As opposed to, for example, you know, getting two, three clients in in month one, those clients all leave you because you can't get them results because you've tried to outsource it, um, you know, to some freelancer that you found online because that's what the gurus told you to do. Um, and then, you know, in month two, you're left in the trenches again because you need to replace those clients that you had in month one and also getting more clients because you still want to scale your agency, okay? So that is basically the old way of doing things. It's no longer... Uh, possible and feasible to outsource for cheap and cheerful because Facebook ads are getting more and more difficult with iOS 14 and so on and so forth. So it's not as easy to outsource. More people are getting burnt by you know these fake agencies online, which means that people are more skeptical. They want to see previous results. They want to see results quicker and so on and so forth. So it's not as easy as it once was. And the easiest way to, you know, get back to winning ways and to scale your business is, like I said, by getting results for your clients. And I just want to quickly hop into my screen in just a second to show you how you can easily get a return on investment for your clients and how we can quickly calculate that while on the call so that you get easy ROI clients and you know which clients to turn down and which clients to actually spend some time on. So without further ado, let's hop into the computer. No, I don't waste no time. Okay guys, so like I said, uh, what we're going to do now is quickly work out if a client is worth our time, what the ad spend needs to be, what the retainer can be to get this client a return on ad spend and a return on investment. So quick example, let's say the ad spend is 2000 a month um, and your retainer is 5000 a month. There we go then that means that the total investment for the client is 2,000 plus 5,000 a month, which means that the client is investing $7,000 a month into this campaign, okay? However, it, we, we, what we need to now do is get a return on that investment. So we need to get them 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 a month back so that it makes sense for them to continue. However, we've only got 2,000 in this case in ad spend. So we need to get them, hypothetically speaking, 10,000 back with a 2,000 ad spend, which means that the return on ad spend needs to be five. So we need to 5X their ad spend for this to make sense for them. Okay, now that is obviously a very quick example. We haven't taken into consideration a lot of metrics, but that is sort of how you need to think, okay? Now, whereas let's say the ad spend is 2,000 and your retainer is 1,000, which means that their total investment is 3,000 a month. Um, if we wanna get them, let's say we wanna double that, so we wanna get them 6,000 back, um, that means that we only need to get them a 3X return on ad spend because we've got a $2,000 ad spend and ad budget, okay? So what we're going to do is basically work out all of these metrics so that you can quickly calculate for yourself when you're on the call with these clients if it's worth your time and like I said, how much they need to spend, what the return on ad spend needs to be and so on and so forth for this to make sense for them and also for you, okay? So what I'll just quickly do is I'll add a row below here. There we go. So let's say, um, because obviously, you know, I do highly recommend only working with proven clients. Um, let's say the ad spend is 2,000, or let's just say 1,000 just to start off with for this example, and the return ad spend that they're currently getting is two. So that means that for every dollar they are spending on ads, they're getting $2 back, which means as well that their purchase conversion value, so the revenue that make, they're making from the ads, is two times a thousand dollars, which means they are uh, getting a page conversion value of two thousand dollars. 
So their total investment is $2,000. They're getting $2,000 back. So you could say, okay, they are breaking even. However, there are a few more things that we need to take into consideration, um, especially when we're working with e-com clients. Now, this is mainly applicable for an e-com flow. Their cost of goods sold and their profit margin percentage. So just because they are making $2,000 in ads um, and they're spending $1,000, that does not necessarily mean that they are making a profit. So let's say their profit margin is 50% which means that the cost of goods sold is 100% minus the profit margin percentage times the page conversion value is 1,000. So with these numbers, we can now quickly work out what the return on investment is, what the break-even ROAS needs to be, and then also our retainer ROAS. So how much of a retainer has been do we need to get them to get them a return on our retainer as well? So in this case, the return on investment is, is the page conversion value of 2000 minus the ad spend minus the cost of goods delivered or cost of goods sold, I should say, and then minus the retainer, which in this case is actually not profitable. So even though we are spending a thousand ads and getting a 2000 back because of their profit margin percentage and our retainer, they are actually at a loss. So let's say the return on ad spend is not two, but it's four. Then as you can see, we are getting them a return on investment because we're getting them $4,000 back from the ads. They have spent a thousand on the ads themselves. They spent a thousand on our retainer and their cost of goods sold is $2,000, which means that their sort of total investment. So if we see this as an agency investment and then the total investment being um, everything together with the cost of goods as well, which means that this is um, the agency investment plus the cost of goods delivered. So their total investment in this scenario is 4,000. They're getting 4,000 back from the ads which means that their return on investment is nothing. They have broken even, which means that their ROI score is 100%. So their ROI score is one divided by the return on investment divided by, or I should say one plus the return on investment divided by the client investment, which is this one here, which is 100%. So let's say their return on is not 4, but 4.5. As you can see, they'll make a profit and their ROI score is 112%. So they've made 112% return on their investment. Okay, so for the break-even ROAS, that is obviously easy. They've got a profit margin of 50%, which means that they need to get one divided by the profit margin is, oh, my bad, is one divided by the profit margin is two. So they need a return on ad spend of two to break even on their profit margin. So let's say they are getting a 1.8% uh, return on ad spend. Because their profit margin is 50%, they will actually be making a loss as opposed to, let's say it's um, a profit margin of three. And I'll just remove our retainer here because we'll work that one in just a second. Then as you can see, their return on investment is profitable. So as you already can see before, I removed the retainer because this does not include the retainer. That is just the profit margin percentage. So to work out what the retainer ad spend needs to be to include the retainer, that is as follows. So the retain on ad spend, including the retainer, is the total investment divided by the ad spend times the profit margin percentage, which is this one here. So that means that the retain, retainer ROAS in this scenario needs to be four. So let's say their profit margin percentage is not uh, 50%, but it's 30%. That means that we need a 667 uh, retain on ad spend or a 3.3 for them to break even on our retainer as well. Now these actually change based on what uh, the ad spend is and what the ROAS is. So let's say rather than spending a thousand on ads, we're spending 10,000 on ads. Then as you can see, our return on uh, ad spend with the retainer all needs to be 3.6 uh, as opposed to what we just had, which was 6.6 .6 because the retainer 
percentage wise is a smaller portion of the total investment. Okay, so I hope you guys understand sort of the metrics behind all of this and how you can quickly work out for yourself whether it is worth your time to actually take on a certain client, what the return ad spend needs to be and so on and so forth. Because what you'll realize is that not every client is actually worth taking on. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, um, you are getting a five ROAS for a client, but their profit margin is only 30. That means that, as you can see here, the return on ad spend for them to get a return on investment needs to be 6.67, which means that at the moment with these numbers, it's not actually profitable, as opposed to a client that you might put in just the same amount of effort, but they have an 80% profit margin, which means that they are actually getting a good and healthy return on investment, okay? So the profit margin percentage and the return on ad spend play very, very important roles in whether or not it's worth your time and effort to take on those clients, because like I said, the same amount of effort applies for those two scenarios, but because one had a lower uh, profit margin, you had to work twice as hard, and with those numbers, you know, you weren't actually getting them a return, which means that these clients will leave you sooner rather than later, as opposed to the other one, where you put in just the same amount of effort, but they will have to stay with you for months and maybe even years to come. So, I hope you got something out of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions regarding any of the metrics that we discussed today. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.